Hey guys, it's Melissa Murrah with Vintage Bee Design, and today I have several good fall projects that you can make for your booth or for a market, whatever you've got coming up. And I know it's still a little early for most people, but we've got a lot to get done. We have nine markets this year starting in August. So I like to have a lot of handmade in the booth and yeah, so if I don't take this slow time to get started, then I'll never get it all done. So I'm starting with some fence wood and I'm just cleaning it up, removing any old nails or anything that could be painful or damaged, uh, damaged equipment or damaging to our hands. Next, I'm going to cut um, two pieces that are the same size, the same height, and then I'm gonna trim these down so they are a little bit more perfect rectangles, if you will. I'm just gonna cut off the raw edges and then cut it roughly down the middle. These are rustic, this is gonna be a rustic lantern. And so it's not meant to look completely perfect. Next, I'm gonna make my own pumpkin spice color and I'm gonna do that by mixing up some DIY Orange Crush and then adding some layered chocolate to it. I don't really have a formula for this. It really is how brown do you want your orange? But the brown tones it down nicely and I've got it in a glass, a small glass mason jar. You can see there's much more orange than there is brown, but this really is about tinting to the color you want. This is rustic, so I do kind of want it a little bit more brownish. I'm using DIY Paint's new little dipper brush. It is nice and soft and does a good job on painting up this rough wood very nicely. I am doing all sides of these because you will be able to see from every angle. So I need to do the front, back, and all four sides. Now I have this very small spindle that I'm going to use as the stem of my pumpkin lantern. And I'm using fusion paint in the color Bayberry. It's a really nice warm green. I'll be using it several times today. Once everything is dry, I'm gonna take it out to my workshop and use my orbital sander. I'm gonna sand all sides with 220 grit sandpaper. If your wood is really rough because I'm using old fence wood, you could go down to 100 grit and that would make it more rustic, but it would also help clean it up and make it a little softer. Uh, 220 grit was fine for this wood, however. When assembling this lantern, it is important to put your little stem on the top of the top piece and attach that before you build your entire lantern. And the reason for that is because once you build it up, you're going to have a hard time getting your nail gun or whatever you're choosing to use to attach it inside of there. So I'm going ahead and putting some wood glue on all of these, and then I'm gonna use my power nail to just kind of put some brads in, and that's gonna hold it while the wood glue dries. The goal of the, the nails isn't to keep it together permanently. That's the job of the glue. The gl job of the nails is to hold it together while the glue dries. I do strongly recommend that if you're going through a piece of wood, like holding the spindle in place, that you make sure where your fingers are located at all times so you do not accidentally shoot yourself um, in the finger instead of your spindle. And we're just gonna do the same thing, attach this uh, top onto the base using wood glue. And I did end up, because this is so rough and the top is a little bit warped, I did end up actually adding clamps to it um, overnight and uh, making sure that, because I didn't feel like that it was as stable as I wanted it to be. And since we used DIY paint and this is water soluble, once everything is completely assembled, then I'm going ahead and I'm going back in with my DIY brush and I am using DIY liquid patina in crystal clear and I'm giving this everything two nice coats. This will protect it from outdoor use um, if it's sitting on a porch or things like that. I wouldn't sit it directly out into the weather, um, but these are old fence panels, so they have been weathered for a long time already. I am very much looking forward to making these in multiple sizes and shapes, some bigger for our greenery and some perhaps long, like long fat pumpkins. I think this could be so many different ways and I'm looking forward to experimenting with a little bit. I'd love to get your feedback. We have some of your favorite Prima products back in stock. Yay! And we have the new H2O transfers coming up. So be sure to check those out. We have tons of new middies as well as restock on our regular middies. 
We have the new DIY brushes in stock. Check those out. Some new gilding papers from Dixie Belle, which are so cool. And there is even a new yellow patina spray, perfect for your pumpkins that are coming up in a video to be shown soon. Sue messaged me with this picture after going through boxes of antiques that she had picked up from a house cleanout. I found this on Pinterest and thought it was a good starting place. My pieces have glass nubs, and so the first thing I need to do is remove this plastic, and it actually came off pretty easily. I was very concerned that the glue would be heavy, but it only took a few minutes to get the plastic off, and then all I needed to do was drill a hole in some of my spindles so that it would fit. Now, I forgot to film actually drilling the hole, so what I wanna say is that you start with a very small hole and you work yourself up to a much bigger hole. In this case, I needed a 5 8 inch hole, which is pretty large for such a skinny spindle. So it's really important that you start with a small bit and work your way out. And now I'm painting this little piece just below the head of my angel with that pumpkin spice color that I made with DIY's orange crush and layered chocolate. I'm going to leave the head the actual color that the spindle came in and then I will give everything a light distress with 220 grit sandpaper. Once it's all dry, of course. Next, I'm gonna fashion some wings out of some wire that I have. All I can say is you need more wire than you think you do. So we're just gonna basically turn this into a figure eight and then wrap the extra wire around the middle, leaving a little pokey outy part that we will trim down and that is going to go into a hole that I have drilled on the back of the angel. And we'll use construction adhesive to attach the angel to the base and each of its wire pieces to itself. So it really is a pretty easy um, trick to do these angel wings, but each set will for sure be different. I think the thing is to have fun and experiment. You know, some angel wings show downward angles, some show upward, just have fun. Now that my angel wings are made, let's make her halo. For this, I am gonna use a cut off piece of spindle to create a nice circular shape. Believe it or not, it's really hard to do a, circ a freehand circle with wire, at least in my opinion it is. So I wrap this around twice and much like the wings, I just wrap it over itself and then leave a little point sticking out. I can attach to a hole I have drilled in the top of her head. Because I do intend to sell these, I am using some Gorilla Grew construction adhesive and you can use um, E6000 or even hot glue if you want to, but these won't move well just using hot glue. Um, they won't last without having to glue them back in. And again, I'm selling these, so I wanna be sure that I get the best bond that I can. Now I want to dress her up a little bit. So I'm gonna take some of the fabric that I have this is all homespun fabric, and make a little rag bow and um, tie it around her skirt. I've had a bunch of people ask how I make my rag bows, and so it's really simple. I'm just gonna layer a couple of pieces of fabric. In this case, I've got some white muslin and some of the same homespun ticking, and layer them, and then have one a bit skinnier to tie around the grouping and then just sort of fluff and trim to however you want. If you want a fluffier rag bow, you're gonna add more pieces. They can all be different lengths, and it's really this easy. It's just about sort of pulling them apart. If you want it to have a little bit more strength, you can also use some wired ribbon. I love all the little details. Let me know which is your favorite. I think mine's the witch. I've embellished these with some little findings that I had in my workshop and I've created four different little angels. Well, one is more of a witch. Tell me what you think about these varieties and if there's anything that you would have done differently. I love that little bat. Um, it was in my stash. I think this has been a good use of the globes that Sue found in her haul. And uh, let me hear what you think. I think they're charming. What do you think? And here's a quick reminder that you can follow us on all social media at Vintage Bee Design. And we have a community in Facebook called Creating the Hive or Creative Con Vintage Bee. And I have just started this month a new coaching group. Membership is only $20 a month. There's lots of discounts. Links in the description below. Let's get back to crafting. 
For our next project, I am going to make over a couple of boards that have been in my personal collection for a couple of years now. You may or may not remember this project from earlier on our channel, but I am mixing up some Dixie Belle Evergreen with some salt wash. I want this to be fairly thick because I'm going to be doing a raised stencil. So anyway, I had these boards that I had stenciled and now I'm gonna use a couple of Finnabar's stencils that they have out. We have new ones coming in the next couple of days. So I thought about waiting, but I really love these two particular stencils that I already had in stock. And we will probably do a lot of stencil pumpkins as fall approaches. But anyway, I am using these two little mini um, trowels, if you will. They are a great set and perfect for raised stencils like this. And I am just filling in it, not completely. I do want some of the board to be seen, but just layering in this raised stencil. And yes, you can still see what's underneath at this point, but when I'm done, you will not be able to. So just fill in this however you like, and then we'll move on to the next part. I wanted to be sure I didn't smear any of that stencil for this next part, so I did hit it with the heat gun, but I just used the same little mini squeegee trowels that I had and used some of that evergreen to just sort of create some texture on the other parts of the pumpkin that I did not stencil. And this makes it so that it has more texture and it's not, you know, this great pattern design and then blank smoothness. And uh, I just set these aside to dry afterwards. Once again, I'm going to use that pumpkin spice color that I made with my DIY Orange Crush and layered chocolate. And I'm just going to paint completely right over these. I think I only did one coat, but if you feel like you need more than do two, just remember you're going to distress. So don't make it too hard on yourself. After that's dried and before you distress, you wanna give this one good coat of top coat. And again, I'm using DIY's liquid patina. And the reason is because you have these two different colors, that green is gonna create a lot of dust that I don't want to grind into the orange. And if you go ahead and seal between these, then it'll keep that from happening. You could wet distress here, but I almost always prefer sanding with 220 grit sandpaper. And I really wanna expose the evergreen raised stencil that I had on here and have that show almost like the little bumps you see on pumpkins or mossiness or what have you. But I really wanna be sure that I see it. And I didn't wanna paint the back, so I was just cleaning up the back a little from overpaint. The texture on these is exactly what I wanted. I really love how these transformed into pumpkins. It's funny because I walked by them every day in my seeing them in my personal stash, thinking how cute they would be as pumpkins. So I'm really excited to have them. I feel like I've been getting a lot more comments lately, people asking to bring back some of the trash to treasure pieces. Well, here's one from our shelf. And I know the thrift flips are everybody's favorite, but right now I've just got to move what is in my stash and get it ready for the next season. This can was one of the things I wanted to work on. And so I've painted it with two layers of my pumpkin spice. Now I'm using watered down Dixie Belle in the color coffee bean. I chose to use Dixie Belle instead of DIY because when I put the next layer of top coat over this, I didn't want to take a chance that it would smear. And because top coat is a liquid that could happen and I didn't choose to wax it. After I do the coffee bean, then I go in again with the Fusion Mineral Paint color Bayberry. It's the same green that we've been using. After all of this is dry, then I'll go ahead and give it two full coats of DIY's liquid patina. DIY liquid patina is my favorite top coat. I know this probably doesn't seem like a huge makeover. All I did was paint it orange and then give it some fleck, but I do think that it stands out a lot more and looks a lot richer to me. It looks less cheap than it did with the white and the painted pumpkins. Let me know what you think. I would love to hear which was your favorite project, and if you liked this content, like and subscribe.